Well, my name's Ned Bell. I'm the exec chef for uh, a program called OceanWise. It's a Canadian sustainable seafood program. I've been with them for a couple of years. Previous to that, I was the executive chef at the Four Seasons Hotel here in Vancouver, where we became the first luxury hotel in the country to be 100% ocean wise. Um, I was born in the Okanagan back in the uh, early 70s. My father was a hydroponic tomato farmer, but I'm pretty sure he might have been growing other things hydroponically. <laughs> was the early 70s after all and uh, my name is Ned so you know my parents uh, my parents were what you would call a hippie but certainly uh, you know after university they moved up to the Okanagan which you know back in the 70s was really as much uh, as it has become a global destination for delicious wine it really is an orchard uh, community it's So we're not going to eat this today, but these are uh, spectacular crabs. Uh, maybe our most prized crab on the west coast. They don't grow on the west coast, so these are uh, from different uh, parts of yeah, like about a two and a half pound lobster. Half a week at least. During the summer, it's almost daily. They come here, Air Canada cargo. Yeah, so I mean, they're in the water yesterday, they're here today, right? So pretty uh, premium quality. Uh, you know, we ship a lot of... Uh, BC spot prawn season is the most celebrated early season in this city. So, like, the amount of intense sort of excitement that surrounds the first traps to be pulled from the ocean is hard to uh, understate. Uh, a couple of weeks ago there was about 2,500 people right here on this pad oh. kind of waiting for the boats to arrive. These three fishermen that you're going to meet, I, I, I sort of the best way to explain how important they are to me is and maybe the unique relationship I have with them is sort of like you know, back in high school when I had three girlfriends at the same time, <laughs> these guys are like my three girlfriends, and so I treat That's them all us. a little bit differently, and there's jealousy for sure. So I texted one of them an hour ago, he didn't have prawns, so I texted another one who happened to have the other guy on the same boat with him, oh, he, he has prawns, but the other guy is going to give me the stink eye for sure. We're going to get them and be able to cook them today, and the fact that they were in the ocean less than an hour ago is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you scale as well as scale? Everybody knows what a spot prawn is. A lot of people don't know what this is. This is golden. So this is a spot prawn. There's a spot prawn. Right. So it's called a. You can hold them. Strike fish. Kick them out so that they can really prize this species. And his lovely family and wife, they have an amazing business. So basically direct from fishermen you might have seen in your journeys, uh, but right past the Lionsgate Bridge is what we call Turn up into the north boat. <laughs> Take the head off, right? Like so. And if you're squeamish, you don't have to watch. But for me, this is like, you know, we live in this culture where appreciating where our food comes from for me is really part of the journey right and certainly as a chef you want to you know when you get something this extraordinary this fresh caught by friends of yours you know it's pretty special to be able to celebrate that um, not unlike what might be in the bottle or what you know whether it's a, a spirit or a craft beer or a delicious wine from someone who you know you know where you're enjoying the the terroir you know this to me is like uh, an incredible gift of living on the west coast yeah. like so um, and so of course the ability to be able to eat it fresh is pretty amazing so what they do is really the dishes are just vehicles for the spot runs quite honestly uh, we're going to do a spicy uh, pasta spec uh, spaghetti with uh, spot prawns and then we're going to do an asparagus risotto with spot prawns. But what I wanted you to do 
nothing too crazy technical about that, but the thing about, for me, with vegetable stock is that you want to use vegetables uh, that don't have a big, they don't have a big color to them. So like carrots and red peppers, you wouldn't want to use for, this is about making homemade stock, and in this case, vegetable stock, or lobster, etc. I don't want big, bold flavors. I want to try and make sure that the, the seafood really speaks for itself. Now, you know, and what I mean by that is like you can still use things like curry and, and uh, Asian flavors, of course, that are delicious and big, but you really want to make sure that you allow, it lends itself really well, etc. And really, this is just going to go into the water. We're going to simmer it for about 40 minutes, and then we have this beautifully flavored stock ready to go. I'll also throw also its flavor. Uh, before adding it to uh, the asparagus at the end. Well, as soon as I'm done, what I do is take the head, take the tail. At the base of the head and the tail, you slowly separate it like so. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> take that. Okay. Take that. That's a shrimp, right? Uh, a shrimp, yeah. I'll give it a go. Yeah, what the hell? I should, I should try so We need more people hand. in here. Do you want to get in here, Margaret? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm slightly, I am slightly skittish, but I think I should just get in there. Time. So, what I would consider, um, we'll get that on crank if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, yeah, I will actually So, a, a roasted garlic confit with, uh, so that we'll infuse the oil. So, we'll use the oil and we'll use the garlic. So it's a bit of a fast way to get a, a uh, cook them directly into the dish that you're going to make. Uh, you know, a spot prawn chowder, spot prawn, um, uh, you know, in this case, pasta and risotto. What we are going to do first is we're going to quickly blanch the prawns just to sort of set them. Then we're going to peel the skin. Basically, any time you can pre-cook something just slightly to help it stay perfect, hence why, think of it like we're blanching the prawns a little bit first. We want to shock the color. We want to not cook this through in the risotto because then the asparagus will go a bit muted and mushy and gray sort of in flavor. Yeah. Similar to a prawn, we, we want to make sure that these aren't bullets when they're overcooked, right? So by pre-cooking them a little bit, then I can add them towards the end of the dish and then they're going to be perfectly cooked. So we have some boiling water here. We're going to dunk them into Water, just like so. And then, of course, we are cooking them, but we don't want them to cook all the way through because they will also continue to cook. And you call it shocking, do you? Shocking. So, this is uh, blanching. <laughs> we want to make sure that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have shallots. We have the roasted garlic olive oil, and then we're going to start cooking our pasta pretty quick. But basically, prawns get done first. We're not cooking the pasta yet because we want to cook the pasta directly into the sauce, and we're going to start quickly making the sauce. This is absolutely a dish you can make at home really easily. I'm going to add a little bit of salt at the beginning. I always want to add salt to somebody who really likes, you know, it's like, like really spicy food, and some of us don't. I made a roast. How many chefs would you have to do that? Oh, you have probably 60. So, what a treat. You guys are going to eat well. <laughs> From spot prawns on the west coast to yeah. delicious winery food. Where did the garlic go? Perfect. Thank you so much. So now I'm actually going to add the garlic in. Basically, wow. <laughs> roasted garlic oil, and then we have some of the parmesan, red onion. We have our veg stock. I'd love you to come over and take a look, maybe even get a taste, or if you want, uh, you know, just to sort of see the type of flavor that I'm looking for, which is, you know, it's this golden sort of liquid. Start, don't stop. Don't go answer the phone. Don't give the kids a, kids a bath. 
you know, make sure that you're using a pot that has a nice, of a, a nice amount of base, you know, so it's wide enough. It's thick, so it holds heat properly. You don't want to use, you know, to me, like the, the equipment, the quality of knives, the quality of pots and pens, that's important in execution of it. Uh, again, it really depends. I'm not going to give you a big, huge portion because you're probably going to sleep on the plane as it is. We're all looking for. Is this an overnight flight? Is that an overnight? A little bit. About five minutes. A little bit at a time. Yeah, and it's over eight, so medium high, not high. You don't want to burn it. And then I'll add the wine. So we're going to add about two cups. Maybe a little more. Maybe that would be more. That's quite hard. That's a bit of I'm not, I'm not that I'm coming up with a whole new recipe. I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm like, 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 i am That's video, that camera's video as well, is it? Mm. Yeah. That, that lemon.